Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers, the organizers for for this uh, for this event. I'm pleased to to talk to to DeepSec. It was it's my first time. So yeah, uh, today I'm going to talk about the Google Play billing that's used on uh, Android uh, devices. So maybe just a quick survey. Uh, how many people uh, are using uh, an Android device? Okay. And who did already made uh, payments using Google Play billing? Okay. I guess mostly for games or for uh, for the stuff. Who did it for games? Android games. No one? No one is playing uh, in your Android device? Okay. Cool. Uh okay. Because this talk if you want uh, if you like to play uh, Android games, it will be uh, very nice to you to learn some tricks how to avoid to pay for for your for your Android games. Okay. So, so let's start. Just a quick quick presentation about myself. So I'm a senior penetration tester at Rondrisec, which is an infosec uh, company in uh, in France based in Paris. I have more than 10 years of experience in different fields, Active Directory, Windows, privilege escalation on Windows, for instance, and so on, or li Linux, web finding web application uh, issues, Wi-Fi, and also Android, which is the aim of, of this talk. I'm also a member of the Checkmarks Application Security Research Team. Maybe you heard about this team recently, about the bugs I found on the uh, Google Camera application. So we were able to find a way to activate the camera remotely, even if the screen is locked or uh, the, the, the screen is turned off. I'm also a core security researcher at Cobalt.io. So if some people uh, perform some kind of bug booty, you already know this, this company. And finally, I like to play CTF, uh, such as uh, on platform as Axobox, uh, or on events like Insomniac, Nuidiac, and so on. So my presentation will be divided in four main parts. First, I'm going to give you a quick overview about the Google Play Building uh, API. Uh, then I'm going to present you some known vulnerabilities on this library. Uh, then I'm uh, going to show you some vulnerable application. And uh, just a conclusion to wrap up what, uh, what we talked today. So, what is the Google Play Billing uh, API? So, Google Play Billing, or before it was called Google In-App Billing, but it's the same thing. It's a service that lets you sell digital content inside your Android application. So, if you don't want to manage all the, uh, not, not the funny part of the payment, you can uh, let Google handle, handle this for you. Mostly with this framework, uh, you can perform two kind of, uh, I mean, you can sell two kind of uh, products, what they call the one-time products, or uh, what they call subscriptions. So as the name implies, one-time products, it's some products you are, you are going just to buy only once. So for instance, uh, you are going to pay for the premium version of your favorite application, or if you need, s or if some extra products are sell uh, in this application. So for instance, for Android games, sometimes, uh, for instance, Clash of Clans or other kind of uh, this game, which is free to play but uh, pay to win, uh, you have to pay to buy some credits, some coins, some leaves, or whatever. So this kind of product, it's called one-time products. And for the subscri subscriptions, for sure, in fact, it's more a payment you need to be to perform regularly. Uh, some some malwares, in fact, use this kind of of, uh, of payments. So you don't pay for the app, but after three days, you have to pay uh, a big amount every week or every day or every month or whatsoever. In a legitimate use case, usually magazine or newspaper are using this kind of of payment. Uh, if you want to be uh, to be a member or to be uh, to have access to the magazine or newspaper. So the payment is handled by Google, so which is cool for developers. They don't have to manipulate credit card numbers or credit card uh, data. Uh, in, in addition, Google provides the tra tra tracking about the products. So with you, uh, 
with the Google Play Console, a developer can track which products were sold in his application, and also uh, if they need to um, to manage reimbursement. If, uh, for instance, uh, the user is not happy with the product, you can be reimbursed, and all of this is is managed by by Google. So, for the developer, it's easy to implement some some kind of payment using this this API. So to show you more, more technically how it works, so basically you have your, uh, your application emptying, uh, emptying your, uh, the, the, the Google Play Billing API here. So for sure to, to use this API, you need to have the Google Play uh, Store application installed on your device. And then for instance, if a user wants to buy some products inside your app, they, they need to select the, the, the product they want for sure. And after that, in fact, your application is going to send an intent to the Google Play Store uh, application saying, okay, this user wants to buy this product. So uh, from, from that, the Google Play uh, Store is going to manage all the payment process. So they are going to ask you your credit card number or uh, your if you want to pay uh, using PayPal or using a voucher card and whatsoever. So there is kind of billing request performed between the Play Store application and the Google, Google uh, backend. And after that, when the payment was correctly performed, um, the kind of a receipt is sent to the, your application telling, okay, the purchase was correctly performed and here are the details about uh, the purchase. And normally, but this is optional, uh, the developer of the application can perform some extra steps to verify uh, this receipt uh, given by Google uh, and then deliver the content of the, uh, to the user. So uh, just to show you, but if you already perform the payment using Google Play Billing, you know uh, what it looks like. But on this application, which is a trivial drive uh, sample application, it's an application provided by Google to test the, the Google Play Billing API. So you see when you select a product in this case, then you have kind of, um, it's like an iframe in fact. So when you see this, in fact it's like the Google Play Store talking with you. You are not like in the, your application anymore. It, you, are, uh, you are using the Google Play Store. You perform the payment with your credit card or whatever and then you get payment successful, and then you get when you get the payment successful, the application receives a receipt from Google with all the information about, about the payment. So to validate the purchase, um, Google uh, recommends two ways, uh, I mean, allows two ways, in fact, allows two ways to do that, not recommends, but allows two ways to, to perform the validation. Uh, they told you that you can perform the, pur uh, the purchase verification on a server, or you can uh, verify the purchase on device. In any case, whatever you choose on, this on a server or, or, or in the device, a JSON object containing the response, of, uh, the response data of the purchase is sent to the, to the application. Usually in the documentation, they call that this object, this JSON object, the in-app purchase data. If we look quickly what you can find on this JSON object, you, f you, fi you find some different parameters, but you find the order ID, which is just an identif identifier of the transaction, the package name, which is the package name of your application, a product ID, identifying your product, the purchase state, usually is only two values used, uh, zero or one, zero for if the purchase was correctly done, or one if the purchase was cancelled by the user. And also there is kind of, um, we can say a cross-site request uh, forgery token, a purchase token, <coughs> which is generated by Google to identify uniquely this transaction. So just to give you a quick uh, example of, of, uh, of this object, you can de uh, see this, uh, this kind of response from the DoodleJump uh, application. So to validate that, it's just not sent, yes, the, the JSON object is sent in plain text, but it's signed by the Google Play Console. In fact, when you publish your application on the Google Play Console, uh, a Keeper is uh, generated for each of your application, 
and the private key is used to sign this uh, JSON object. And then normally, in your application, you need to embed the public key to validate the signature. And if the signature of the JSON object is correct, you can validate uh, the payment. So because of that, if you look at the document documentation, Google recommends to validate the purchase details on a server controlled by the developer. Because of course, if you do that on the device, someone can mess up with the verification process. However, it's still possible to verify the purchase on the device. But the documentation warns you this form of verification isn't truly secure. And uh, this logic can bec uh, become compromised if your app is reverse engineered. But let's have a look at, again, at the trivial drive application provided by Google. And if you look at the code, at some point you have a class called security uh, performing the verifying uh, purchase. So you can see here a verify purchase uh, uh, function uh, verifying the signature of the JSON object. But on the comment, you can see for a secure, a secure implementation, all of this code should be implemented on a server that's communicate with the application on the device. But the sample application do it locally. So, okay, maybe uh, people are not just using as is uh, the, the Google Play Billing, but they are using third parties. Maybe you already uh, heard about one of them, but we have uh, two famous, two, two well-known uh, third parties uh, used on Android, uh, one called Prime, Prime 31, and the other one is Unity Yap. Unity, maybe you already heard about this library for video games, you know, for graphic, graphic purposes, is already used. So let's look at the documentation of Prime 31. When you go to the purchase validation section, they say, yes, uh, Google highly recommends always validating purchase on a secure server. However, the plugin will do on device validation for you. But be careful, Android apps are very easily hacked, so they shouldn't be relied on. So that's on the documentation of Prime 31. So next, Unity. Okay, on the documentation, they talk about two ways uh, of validation, local validation and remote validation. Okay, so let's lo have a look at the remote validation. And they say, uh, as you can see, this plugin doesn't not offer support for server-side validation. So at this point, maybe you are saying, but what? So we have only device validation on, uh, on our way. Uh, so we'll see. But yes, basically, you see that, OK, Google gives the possibility, possibility to validate the purchase locally. In the documentation, the validation is performed locally. When all third parties used on Android devices only support device validation. So the question is, what do you think developers are going to do? Okay, before looking at the results, so a little bit of history and let's talk about some known vulnerabilities already found on the Google Play billing API. So six years ago, so almost seven, but Dominic Schurman uh, found already two vulnerabilities uh, allowing to bypass the payment process on the Google Play Billing API. So he did that correctly. He disclosed the vulnerability uh, to Google. Uh, but at this time, I, I guess Bug Bounty was not uh, re well, uh, well, uh, well famous, and so it was just uh, on the Hall of Fame of Google. But to demonstrate the, uh, the vulnerability, he developed a proof of concept called Billing Hack. And the idea at this time, uh, you just need to install this application on your device, launch it, and profit. So let's have a look at the two vulnerabilities found by Dominic. The first one, if you remember, I told you, when you initiate the payment uh, process, an intent is sent to the Google Play Store application. And so he found that it was uh, an implicit intent sent to the Google Play uh, Store application. So it's easy, for instance, for the billing hack uh, POC he developed to define an intent filter with a high priority for this specific intent. And so in this case, billing hack is going to respond before uh, the legitimate uh, Play Store application. So that's the first thing he found. 
Then he found that, in fact, on the implementation of the verify purchase uh, uh, function, sorry, that if the signature is empty, uh, the validation is true. So you can look at the code. So it was the code uh, when uh, Dominic found the, the, the bug. In fact, yes, if it's empty, the, the function returns true whatsoever. So OK, no need to modify the application, the targeted application. Just launch billing hack, and that's OK. So uh, I made just a quick schema, uh, really simple to, to explain. So the imp implicit intent is sent, is sent to, the, to the system. And in fact, due to the intent filter with a high priority, billing hack is going to receive uh, this intent. And so it can reply with a fake JSON object and use an empty signature to bypass the payment. So what did Google do? For sure, they fixed the two vulnerabilities. So what they did so first, they imposed, they forced each application to be published on the Play Store to define an explicit intent, which should be done uh, at first. So now on your application, when you create the intent, you need to perform the set package, uh, to, to set the package on the intent, so with the name of the uh, Play Store uh, application, which is com.android.vending. And if not, you cannot publish your application on the Play Store. Okay, so that's the first, si first uh, fix. Second fix, <laughs> they modify the verify purchase to return false, even if the uh, string is empty, which is seems normal. Okay, so now my question is, can we remove a client-side issue using a client-side fix? Because, in fact, if you are following well, if your application is still performing the validation on the device, whatever the fixes performed by Google, you can just modify them and uh, use a proof of concept uh, given by uh, Dominic. So, it's in fact, it's pretty simple. You select your targeted app, you modify the uh, set package on the intent to, uh, to target your, your, your own application, we can say. And then you just modify the signature validation on the app to return always true whatsoever uh, the signature is received by the application. So for the first point, it's really easy to find this. And for the second point, it depends how the developers perform the validation. But usually it's, it's pretty easy. So just to give you the hacking steps, install billing arc on your uh, device. So you don't need to have uh, an Android device routed or whatsoever. Decompile the application you want to target, for instance, with APK tool. Modify the bytecode to replace the package. Uh, modify the signature validation on, uh, on, your, uh, on this application. Recompile, sign it with child signer. Install this new uh, application. And you can profit your new game without uh, performing payments. So just a quick note. Uh, I'm not the only one doing this. Oh, some other guys already uh, found this, uh, this kind of, uh, of problems. And so, for instance, there is a famous application called Lucky Patcher, which already performed that. So you need to have uh, root privileges on your device, but when you install Lucky Patcher, it's able to modify the targeted app and to simulate uh, the billing hack uh, application I showed you. In fact, if you look at the code of Lucky Patcher, uh, it copy pastes the prof of concept from uh, from Dominic. Okay, so let's have a look on some vulnerable application. So the first one, maybe you you already heard about this game. It's Doodle Jump, uh, named best of 2015 by Google Play editors. Uh, so in this game, uh, you are pretty limited. You can just buy kind of costumes. Uh, items for for your for your character, and uh, to do that, uh, you need to buy candies. So maybe, I'm going to show you directly the code. I don't know if you see very well, but so. Using JDX in this case, I'm decompiling uh, the application. And uh, here we are, okay, I don't want this one, yes. 
So if you look at the code on the YAB helper of uh, the class YAB helper, you can see that they uh, follow the rules from Google. So they implement the state package with com.android.vending. So here we just need to modify this with a billing hack, for instance. And if we go to the security class, okay, they copy paste uh, the trivial drive, uh, we, can, uh, we can say uh, code, and we have the verify purchase. And you see, okay, in this for, for, uh, version, so they don't return true if the empty, the string is empty, but we can modify uh, the return value of this function to return true whatsoever. So, uh, <coughs> It was just to show you, but you can recompile with APK tool. I already did it, so maybe that's why it's not working. But if you go to to the files on on the smiley part, so you see, okay, that bytecode, but whatsoever. Here we just need to modify this. Okay, save it. Go to the security part. Okay. And here basically is the same. Uh, at some point we can uh, just change the return value to, uh, yes, for instance, move result to be zero. And uh, no, maybe it's not here. If we go to zero, okay. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing very well, but yeah, you. Oh yeah, return vision, for instance. Yes, here we just can modify like this. Something like this, oh, save it, recompile the application. I don't know if I'm not, uh, and that's, oh, and uh, this function is going to return true whatsoever, the verification. So just to show you I'm not lying, I have a small video. You see the game, so yeah, it's in French. So magasin is a shop at the, at the bottom. So here you, you can choose a character. Some characters are free, but for the other ones, you need to buy them with some candies. You can see for this one, it's 1,000 candies. And then the top left, you can see I have zero candies. So let's choose the pumpkin one. So I click buy. And because I have zero candies, it told me, okay, you need to uh, buy some candies so I can buy uh, 10,000, 1,000, or I can have uh, 2,200, sorry, candies free if I watch a video. But I don't want to watch a video. I'm just going to choose 1,000 because, uh, okay, it's, it's Black Friday, but okay, whatsoever. I have Billing Hack responding instead of uh, the Google Play Store. So for the purpose of the demonstration, uh, we have this pop-up, but in fact, we, we don't care. So yes, for sure, I want this for, for free. And then you can see on the top left, I have 1,000 candies. So now I can buy the pumpkin uh, uh, costume. And that's okay. Yeah, so now it's just uh, the Doodle Jump application asking me if I'm okay to buy it or not. Okay, so it was for do the jump. So you see, it's pretty easy to to bypass. Okay, so no need to, to to talk about again. Okay, so let's look another one, Snoopy Pop. So if you know Bubble Witch, it's basically uh, the same game, but uh, you are playing with uh, Snoopy. 
So basically, the same idea, you can bind coins or leaves. Uh, in that case, it's a Unity library which is used. And uh, so as we uh, talked before, uh, they, uh, they are using the Unity YAP plugin <laughs> to, uh, to perform the, uh, the process uh, payment. And so, which is funny with this version, so most of the Unity code is written in mono.net. So when you decompile the application, you can find uh, most of the DLLs which are stored on assets being data managed. And uh, if you look uh, well, there is one DLL called security. And on this uh, DLL, they are performing the purchase validation. So I can show you. So because it's uh, .NET, we can decompile it pretty well. <laughs> Dark mode is not really uh, well. It's pretty easy to decompile. So in this case, I'm going. I'm uh, using a tool. Uh, okay. uh, I'm, I'm using a tool called DNSPy, uh, but I need to close it because I I'm not seeing anything. Okay. So. We have the secu uh, security.dll here. Uh, normally, you see the name Space Unity. And maybe if you can help me, there is a Google Play validator class, which I not, I'm not seeing. No, it's not this one. Okay. This one? Then normally you see validate here? No. This one? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So here you can see, uh, so the validate function, it's basically the same as the verify purchase. You have a receipt, which is a JSON uh, object, and the signature. And here you see we are t uh, calling another function called verify to verify the signature. And uh, if flag is not true, uh, an exception is thrown by the application. So what we just have, uh, just need is to remove that, recompile the application with this new DLL, and that's all. Okay. So if you want just a quick demo, because I'm sure you really want to play with Snoopy Pop. So uh, normally you launch building hack, you let it running in background mode. Okay. I'm going to launch Snoopy Pop. It is launching, okay. It's an emulator, so it takes. Okay, play. Don't worry, we are not going to play. Okay, so you see, I have many leaves, I'm full, many coins, let's buy more. Okay, so you see, yes, I forget to mention, but the billing hack proof of concept, in fact, um, in fact, your application is talking only to billing hack, so you can retrieve all the price you want. So in that case, I put zero for everything, because we are not going to pay. But let's take the most popular one, uh, so 400, coins and two hours of infinite life because uh, why not it's Black Friday so you see it's the same process and process successful okay we can uh, perform the process uh, so now we modify the DLL we, we don't care we can buy it without uh, without any issue Okay, let's go back to the slides. So you have already on the slide, but I guess it's better to show you uh, directly. So as I said, you just modify the DLL, repackage your application with APK tool, sign it, and that's all. 
Uh, the other one is Fruit Ninja. Maybe you already uh, heard about this. So it's a famous game where you need, you need uh, to cut fruits like a ninja, as the name implies. There is more than 100 million of downloads for this game. And first, when I look at uh, when I start decompiling this application, I found that in fact they are using what they call Java native interface. So there is a shared library on this uh, application. So if you don't know what is GNI, it's, um, it's an interface allowing you to interact with native code, usually C or C++, from your Java code. Okay. So in that case, all the sensitive function uh, for the Google Play billing uh, were, uh, were used uh, with Java native interface. So we can see, for instance, here, purchase result native. And we have, in fact, this native keyword telling that, in fact, this function is, the, is implemented on the shared library. So for that, to understand how the purchase uh, process uh, works, we need to reverse engineer the shared library. So in that, in that case, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit big. Uh, it was coded in C++. So yes, it's time consuming to do that. And uh, in addition, my skills on uh, reverse, engin uh, reverse engineering binaries co uh, coded in C++ are pretty limited. So uh, I say, OK, I'm not able to, to modify this uh, shared library. I failed. But just, just, try, uh, just try it by modifying just the, the package and see what happens to see if uh, I'm able to find something. And however, I don't know the implementation of the Porsche's result uh, native function, but she's po poorly made because we can bypass payment uh, just by modifying uh, the, the package. So if you want, I can show you quickly. Uh, so again, free, uh, 